something is trending. Uh, and for many of us at the forefront of this movement, like those of us who are actually trying to not do it by ourselves or to undo what other people have, have done, uh, the next step toward gainful adulthood is trying to make more of what we make. Some people call it a manufacturing renaissance. Well, <laughs> I think it's, I, I swear my timing is pretty good on this one. Um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, while not quite as romantic uh, for the small business like ours that creates physical, tangible objects, the increase in hardware incubators, crowdfunding platforms like Rocket Hub, desktop prototyping tools like MakerBots actually creates opportunities of scale that previously were only possible for large corporations. But this isn't your mother's manufacturing, it's make-ufacturing. Um, we control the product and we rely on distributed supply chains instead of in-house facilities to scale. Uh, where you could call us teal collars, somewhere between white and blue with a little splash of green. And in this inventional revolution, process is your product, execution is your edge, and the world is your infrastructure. Uh, but despite the confluence of all these things that are happening for us, it's still really hard to make shit. To succeed in this space requires a combination of three things, time, money, and ability. If you only have money, you're outsourcing everything. Ability without time or money, and you're working for someone else. No money or ability, and well, you're pretty much just screwed. Uh, but it's the intersection of these three that enables the execution of honed process. For the small business, this is the sweet spot. Let's take a different analogy. Uh, raise your hand if you cooked something from scratch last night for dinner. Right. So congrats, you few are in that sweet spot of delicious execution, and we're, you'd be our competition if you made kinetic furniture, so we're glad you're spending time in the kitchen. But let's see what the rest of you did. So if you have money and time, you went out for dinner. Money and ability, and you ordered in. Time and ability, you put some kale in your ramen. And if you only have time, then, well, you're still screwed, and now you're also hungry. So it's no wonder that the industry with the lowest rate of manufacturing activity, of lowest rate of entrepreneurial activity is manufacturing. Executing at this intersection at even an individual scale is really tough. And uh, like recipes, processes have to be designed to serve your market. And this is especially critical when your business model is based on product innovation for a lot of different demographics. So for the next 260 seconds, we're going to give you a detailed glimpse into the process behind one of our products. In the evolution of this process, it's the moment where our output increases by a factor of 10. So to start, well, Float okay. is a magnetically levitating coffee table. It's made up of 54 repelling wooden cubes, each connected by tethers, which means when you push on it, it compresses and bounces back. So before you start, you're going to need 936 brass stoppers, 468 tethers, 432 stainless steel brass screws, stainless steel screws, 400 shims, 324 CNC tiles, 200 neodymium, neodymium magnets, 72 gliders, 26 hand tools, 18 jigs, 10 rolls of thick tape, 8 ounces of super glue, uh, 3 sharpies, and half, half, uh, half pints of glue, other glues. And six hands helps too. We start with the art. We arrange the tiles to determine how the outside of the table will look. This step seeds the entire build. Organize the tiles into 54 groups of six, and these will be your cubes. You'll need to track seven pieces of your information from each tile. Orientation, XYZ table coordinates, magnet requirements, screw replacement, tether patterns. Use your Sharpies uh, to label those tiles with those 2,268 annotations. Now this is where all the labeling comes in handy. You'll need to drill. 117 tether holes, 432 clearance holes, 432 countersinks, and 72 bottom, bottom glider holes. Now, masterfully glue up four sides of each cube into seamlessly seaming boxes using traditional techniques plus some CNC jigs made of Corian and uh, laser cut shims. And then while you're waiting for the glue to dry, do some CEO stuff. When that's dry, next you disassemble and you glue the, and you glue the top of the boxes onto uh, the four sides and then you wait again and you wait for the glue to dry. 54 times. It's a little repetitive. So before we finish, we actually 
have to finish before, or we have to finish before we get finished. You have to remove all the excess glue, sand 324 faces with an orbital sander, spray all those faces with lacquer, hand sand them, coat with lacquer, sand, coat, sand, coat. We now hire someone to do this for us. The magnets we use could crush your hand, so we take precautions. Uh, any magnet in transition has to be held above your head so as not to attract keys or tools or cell phones. And every magnet, as it comes out of the box, must be labeled with its south pole. It's, I now have a very strong fear of magnets. Uh, we, next, um, we connect the cubes with tethers. Tethering is the tricky bit, so I'm actually going to just read this straight. Insert the tethers to level one and level two tops in alternating faces of L1, L2, and L3 cubes. Tether the cubes in level three together, and you'll now have one level tether. You'll have to think about why we actually build the tables upside down. Uh, now it's time to glue in the magnets. We glue little ones to the sides of the cubes and much bigger ones to the tops and bottoms because gravity is working against us. And you thought we were done with tethering, but not quite yet. We need to tether level two tops and level three downs into sandwiches. We screw those sandwiches into their corresponding level three cubes. We repeat for the next layer, we repeat for the last layer, add gliders to the bottom of the table. We hold our breath and then we flip and breathe. So. As uh, manufacturers or manufacturers, if we really want to scale, now actually we have to move on to something new and hand this process off to someone else. And we have to always remember that we need to save our time, make money, and scale our ability. Thank you and enjoy your takeout.